Hi, in this video I'm going to show you my entire workflow from generating a 3D map with hiking trail to the final rendering. For this tutorial I pick an already existing map set from the library. This example locations is a mountain range with Willoughby Mountain. The mountain range is located in the Rocky Mountains of West Central Colorado in the United States. For getting a most detailed surface, I decide for the high mesh quality. First, I check if the 3D light matches the shadows of the texture. The more precisely the 3D light matches the texture, the more realistic the final rendering result will be. A little exaggeration in the mountain's height will make the result more three-dimensional and impressive. In the next step, I am going to optimize the map texture. The texture is a little too dark so I use an adjustment layer, curves or levels, to brighten it. The texture can also be sharpened a bit to make the 3D rendering appear more detailed. Now I am going to draw my hiking trail on the map surface. I use the pen tool to get a path that is easy to edit.
The trail is ready and can now be equipped with some 3D elements. At both trail stations I want to place a color coordinated flag. Of course the map brightness is also adjustable in the scene. Place an adjustment layer, for example curves or levels, in the 3D underscore map underscore scene folder. Switch the folder property from pass through to normal to limit the brightening only to the 3D map. Match the height map edge color with the map texture. In addition, I want to place a marker that names the location.
If you cannot find a suitable icon, it's also possible to insert an own icon or image. A cloud can make the 3D relief look even more realistic. A set of different clouds is available for download in the user area. Just drag the cloud of your choice into the 3D map document and place it above the 3D map in the layers palette. Match the drop shadow of the cloud to the 3D scene. A few colored light spots can help to make the background look more interesting. Just take a soft brush and draw a spot on a new layer. Place this layer under He3D map. It's best to pick a color from the texture and turn it into a full and bright tone. A second spot in another color can create a nice contrast. If you want, you can use a base shape as a help layer for a drop shadow.
Color can create interesting light effects. My 3D map scene is now ready for rendering. In order to make Photoshop include the 3D elements in the rendering process, you need to close the document and then reopen it. Don't forget to save. A soft shadow can be created via the light adjustment. Select a rendering area to save rendering time. The selection should be made generously to avoid that shadows are getting cut off. You must not make any changes to the 3D map now in order not to lose the rendered object. However, every other layer is still editable. I hope these tips were helpful. Happy mapping!